So when I was 16, I was kidnapped in the middle of the night um, and taken from Connecticut to Utah. Spring Ridge markets themselves as healing teenage girls and mending broken families. I begged my parents not to leave me there. No one told me what was happening or where I was going until I was dumped in the middle of the desert. And it turns out I was brought to wilderness rehab. We had uh, no TV. Um, we weren't allowed to read certain books. Everything was controlled. They monitored our phone calls to our parents. Freedom Village USA provides a place of second chances. When I got admitted there, um, I really was, I was open to the idea. Their prescription was through Jesus Christ that we were gonna fix ourselves. You have to do these chores, you have to do these devotional experiences um, constantly. And so it was like the Bible 24 seven. I'm a gay man. They would attack your sexuality. In the U.S., minors don't have medical autonomy, which means that your parent or legal guardian can give consent for you. And since my mom had full custody, they literally only needed her signature to snatch me up in the middle of the night and fly me across the country. To control the kids, they would just have other kids policing each other and then they'll write them up. And then from there, you're sentenced in some sense to this punishment where you're isolated, where you're secluded from the rest of the population oftentimes, and then you have to do this activity where you pick up wood in upstate New York from one parking lot to the other, or it's a circle, you're not, and you do this for hours. You wake up at 4.30 a.m. to go do some kind of labor. Take care of the horses, chop some wood, make breakfast. You do this, and then it's immediately time to start cleaning your dorm. Everything has to be spotless. There was some staff members that was very clear that there were red flags going up. I remember the director smacking a person and he just, excuse my language, but he smacked the shit out of him. And it was another time we saw he threw somebody in, in the air. Do we beat you? No. 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 <laughs> Don't kid yourself, I'd like to a couple times. Freedom Village is in the news with four right now cases of sexual assault. Kids get tackled and juiced up with the stuff that knocks you out for days. I had to move houses because I lived with the girl that I had a relationship with, so they moved me into another house called Cottonwood. And this is where I would be um, sexually, emotionally, and physically abused for the next year. People will come and check to make sure that you're sleeping in your room every 10 minutes. We found out after we graduated from these, this place and left that it wasn't even regulated. The state of New York had no idea what they were providing these kids. I mean, the sadness of all this is that these, some, a lot of these programs are still open, and particularly with the religious programs that subscribe to a fundamentalist Christian perspective, they are notorious of really attacking kids with this sort of conversion therapy sort of like approach with things. We found thousands of allegations of death and abuse at these types of programs. The video shows the moments leading up to the death of the Detroit teenager who was restrained by staff in a Kalamazoo youth home. We also know from the survivor community that there are people who, they could be in their 20s, their 30s, their 50s, and the trauma is so impacting that it still affects them today. I was strangled, slapped across the face, watched in the shower by male staff. As we saw the problem, 
we really saw that one of the main solutions is legislation. So, for example, there was no trainings for how do you report abuse, right? I was 13 years old when I went to Turnabout Ranch. I feel like it's very important for me to speak on this because I kept my mouth shut for so long. It's the survivor community that's really been trying to bring the this into the conversation so that we can all look at this issue and really see how can we ensure the safety and that everyone is doing the right thing for their kids. And it's, this is not a business for money, but this is about really child welfare.